what, what, what ha- what's happening, man? Uh, you're you're on your way to 49ers camp. What, what 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 what's with the change of 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 pace here, or or is this a change of pace? This has been going on behind the scenes. Tell me the latest on IU, Tom. Say that it kind of changed about a week and a half ago. And Rich, when I was in studio with you last Wednesday, and I brought this up that the trade was a possibility. It was at that point that the 49ers had started having calls again a couple of days before. So there were signs that they might be moving off of their stance, which had been all along, which was since the draft really, we're, we're not going to trade you. You know, there's still several different ways that this can go, despite a variety of attempts, attempts by different people to uh, throw a dart and hope it hits the right target here. We've had tweets about he's re-signing because he bro-hugged Kyle Shanahan. We've had tweets about he's been traded to the Steelers. I mean, th- there's all kinds of stuff going on. The, the real answer is there's still different ways that this can go. I mean, I'm, what, like about 20, 20 minutes away from the facility right now? I mean, this is something that could go down in the next 20 minutes. It could take another 20 days. We just don't know. But it certainly seems like, based on the 49ers, not doing the deal back in the spring, you know, they weren't willing to pay the price yesterday. They certainly doesn't seem willing to pay the price today. So if Brandon Ayuk is going to get paid, it's going to be from a different team. And that's where we stand right now, which is there are teams interested. The 49ers have granted specific teams uh, permission to speak directly with Ayuk's agent. Um, you have to work out both sides of this, both the trade compensation and the contract compensation. And the player ultimately has a level of veto power here because he can say, I- I'm simply not going to go to these teams or I'm not willing to take this contract. At which point, there's you know still a scenario out there where the 49ers said, okay, you vetoed everything. We tried. You're going to play here for 14 million bucks this season. We're just, we're not down to the finish line yet. We're not at the goal line. We're not finalizing. Nothing's been agreed to. There's a lot of conversation still going on here and we'll see where it all leads. When, but has there been at least compensation for what the Niners would accept for an IU trade been agreed to with the Patriots and the, and the Browns? Uh, were you able to confirm that? Tom? It's fair to say that the compensation has been discussed thoroughly, yes. And remember, like we were talking about last week, Rich, there's a 49ers team that is, you know, they were just in the Super Bowl. They want to get back to a Super Bowl. So one way or another, they're going to come out of the we're at, we're... Um, Getting a receiver is part of the deal, whether, whether it's getting a receiver is part of the deal or whether it is get a receiver. Some way that wide receiver group. It's just a matter of you know who it ends up being, and that's all based on what deal, if any, Ayuk uh, and his agent can work out. So you're not willing to confirm these trades have are, are been agreed to with two specific teams? Is that what I'm to pick up from you, Tom? Or I think he's frozen again. We're, we're I'm, I'm here. You got me? No, now yeah. Oh, so okay. so yeah, I'm just trying to pin you down if you don't mind uh, about you know. Are these are these the two teams we're hearing, or or you're 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 not willing to pin that I down? I would say there are still active conversations. There are still active conversations with more than two teams. I would put it that way. Again, because there's different scenarios that could end up playing out with everything here. It's not merely a matter of who the 49ers have agreed with on compensation with at this point. Ultimately. Ayuk has, again, a level of control over this that, hey, we this is the best contract. This is where I want to go. Now figure out what that's going to look like. So we still have moving parts here, Rich. All the teams that have been out there, you know, between the Browns and the Patriots, the Steelers, the Commanders, on some level, everybody has been involved. And, you know, that's what happens when you've got a really dynamic young player who's coming off his best season in the NFL and teams think that he can be a difference maker, but the 49ers have to get what they want and Ayuk has to get what he wants. And so far those two things have not meshed together. What about a contract that the Niners have on the table? Is that still there for him to to take long term if he decides well, whatever other teams are offering him isn't appreciably better uh, when combined with their Super Bowl chances uh, for him to leave? Can he can he just come back home and all the pieces get put that back together? Tom? He can come back home, but it's probably going to be on the fourteen million. Wow, geez. The that's forty nine. Well, substantially change their offer. I mean, think about this, Rich. The the, the, four, the wide receiver market has exploded in this off season, right? And I'm not privy. I'm not BCC'd on all the emails that have gone back and forth <laughs> from negotiating here. 
But if the price in March were an aiming point of, let's say, 28 million, that aiming point naturally, just logically, has to be higher than that now. So the 49ers weren't willing to pay that back when other deals were getting done, when Devontae Smith got 25 a year, when Amon Ra got 28, when uh, Michael Pittman got 23 or 24, whatever that one ended up being. If they weren't willing to be in that bandwidth back then, then the idea that suddenly now with the same player, a guy they know well, and that price tag might be appreciably higher, it's hard to imagine. You never say never on any of this, Rich. We've seen the 49ers pull a rabbit out of the hat late in training camp before. I think that up until a couple of weeks ago, that's what I and a lot of other people just kind of thought was going to be the outcome here. It just hasn't sounded like they've made that type of progress. And so, you know, here we are. I'm in a Uber to or a Lyft to uh, okay. the stadium here on August 6th that we don't have resolution. So just to circle back one more time here on the update, as you are on uh, the 101 South, having just flown into San Francisco, going where the story is, heading to Santa Clara to see what's the what is on Inside Training Camp Live for NFL Media Group. Uh, right now, active negotiations between Ayuk and multiple teams, more than just the two that have been identified publicly, Browns and Patriots, for a contract. And those teams still chatting with the Niners, or that has now been – that part has been handled, right? There has been permission granted to teams beyond those two, beyond the Browns and the 49ers. And there continue to be scenarios, again, because nothing is done. Until something's done, Rich, we've got different scenarios where teams that, you know, one thing I've learned is never to trust when a team is out on a player. I mean, think back to Deshaun Watson. He had four teams that were down to the end. He told one team, you're out. It was the Cleveland Browns. And the Cleveland Browns came back and said, ah, you know what? We're going to do a five-year, unprecedented, $230 million fully guaranteed contract for you. And all of a sudden, his mind changed. So until we get something actually finalized here, which, again, which you see on social media, it gets aggregated and people repeating things back and taking guesses. Nothing is done right now. Nothing is nothing is finalized. And by finalized, I mean all parts of the agreement. It's not just working out the trade compensation. It's other things. And it's certainly possible. And of course, you know, I saw what Matt Mayoko reported in terms of the trade compensation with the Browns and the Patriots. That doesn't necessarily mean those are the only two teams mm. that this can get done to. So stay tuned. And then just at the risk of you freezing again, um, why did the Niners, just explain one more time, why did the Niners decide to say, okay, we're, we're, we're just going to let them talk to other teams and 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 run the risk of being without Ayuk anymore or being willing. Why did, why did they decide to open things up a week and a half ago, Tom? Well, part of this, again, is exploring all their options to add a receiver, too. If you can free up money on your cap and still not feel like you're significantly downgrading at that position and you free up future assets for, for a player who, in all likelihood, you're going down the franchise tag road with, with them if you want to do that next year or else he's walking in free agency for a, a third-round comp pick. This allows them to, you know, potentially at least have certainty about what they're going to do and also keep this from being something that runs throughout the entire course of training camp. You know, Brandon Ayuk has made this very public from the start. That does wear on people at times. That's not the reason that you end up you know, potentially trading a player away. But again, this shifted a couple of weeks ago. It just didn't seem like there was any momentum toward getting a deal done in San Francisco. So the 49ers are exploring their options. And if everything comes together here, this would be the the Ayuk uh, trade would just be one part of something broader here that the 49ers are cooking. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.